We've been looking at what the Bible teaches about Jesus for the last, this month, and uh, we've looked at a lot of things, and this morning we're going to look at the future. Jesus is coming again. Uh, we saw that Jesus is before time. You know, he's, he's the one who created everything, so he was before creation. Uh, he's the creator. He's the one prophesied in the Old Testament, hundreds of prophecies about Jesus coming. And then we saw about his birth, how he came, how he lived, died, rose again, uh, went back to heaven, what he's doing in heaven. We've looked at that. Uh, of course, we don't know everything. There's a lot about God we don't know, but he's revealed uh, many things to us. And this morning, we're looking at the fact that Jesus said he's, he's coming again. I'll get you to turn to 1 Thessalonians uh, chapter 4. And uh, while you're turning there, of course, we have the promise in John 14 where Jesus said, If I go and prepare a place for you, I'll come again and receive you unto myself. Uh, the angels said to the disciples as Jesus had ascended, Ye men of Galilee, why stand ye gazing up into heaven? This same Jesus which is taken up from you into heaven shall so come in like manner as you have seen him go into heaven. That's going to be exciting, isn't it? Uh, Revelations, Jesus said, surely I come quickly. And then depending upon uh, how you talk, either amen or amen, amen, even so, come Lord Jesus. I, was, I had to laugh as we were singing that last song. Some of you saying amen, some of you saying amen. That's all right, the Lord knows. Uh, even so, come Lord Jesus. I hope you're looking forward to Jesus coming again. As we sang that last song, I thought, yeah, it really is true. You know, as, as we think about all the things that we face here, uh, what a blessing it's going to be as we, when we see Jesus, see him face to face. Uh, in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, uh, and uh, starting in verse 13, we see that for Christians, Jesus coming again is an encouragement. It's a blessing. Let me read, I'll read the rest of the chapter, 1 Thessalonians 4 verse 13. But I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep, that you sorrow not even as others which have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with, with the trump of, of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. God says as, as Christians, Jesus coming again is a comfort. We can look forward to it. It's a, it's a blessing. This is an encouragement with Christians. Now, he uses the phrase there, it talks about being asleep. That's just a, a phrase means people that have died. I've noticed recently, currently, it's common to say they passed. People don't like to say dead. Uh, but uh, th that's what he's talking about there. Those that are asleep in Jesus, he's talking about those who've, who've died. And he, he says there in verse 16, the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain. You know, that could be us. Could be today. We might never see 2019. <laughs> Wouldn't that be uh, amazing? Wouldn't that be wonderful? Uh, and one of the things that we can know from Scripture, well, there's several things, but uh, we can know that we will be safe when we're with Jesus. He uses the phrase there in verse 17, uh, we which are alive and remain should be caught up together with them in the clouds. Now, we often use the term rapture. Rapture is the Latin word for caught up. Uh, so some people would say, oh, rapture, it's not in the Bible. Well, in the Latin Bible it would be. <laughs> I don't read Latin, so uh, I don't read the Latin Bible. But in, uh, in our English Bible, it's the word caught up. And it, that just has to do that we're going to be taken out of this sinful world and, and we're going to be with Jesus. We're going to meet him in the air and so shall we ever be with the Lord. You know, what a blessing that is. In uh, chapter 5, verse 9, he says, For God hath not appointed us to wrath, but to obtain salvation by our Lord Jesus Christ, who died for us that whether we wake or sleep, we should live together with him. Wherefore, comfort yourselves together and edify one another, even as also you do. So for Christians, Jesus' coming is, is a comfort. We can look forward to it. Uh, we'll be safe. We won't be going through the tribulation. 
Uh, earlier in, in chapter 1, verse 10, he talks about us waiting for His Son from heaven, to wait for His Son from heaven, uh, whom He raised from the dead, even Jesus, which delivered us from the wrath to come. Uh, we're not going to be facing uh, the tribulation that, that's to come. Not only will we be safe, we'll be changed. Now, with the new year coming up, I know a lot of people will make uh, resolutions and yeah, they're going to change. Well, thank God, someday we're going to be with Jesus and we'll be like Jesus. Uh, we won't have to make a resolution. In uh, Philippians chapter 3, for instance, and, and verse 20, he says, Our conversation is in heaven, from whence also we look for the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall change our vile body, that it may be fashioned like unto his glorious body, according to the working whereby he is able even to subdue all things unto himself. He will change our vile body. Now that word vile just means lowly. It's exactly the same word Mary used uh, when uh, she was confronted with being the, the mother of Jesus. And uh, she said, how can you, uh, you know, use me who is of such low estate? Low estate, vile. Uh, but that's us. We're, we're not like God right now in every way. And uh, we're certainly not what we should be and not what we could be. Uh, we're, we're lowly people. But someday we're going to be changed. And uh, the Bible says in, uh, in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, it's going to happen in a moment in the twinkling of an eye. Now, I don't know how long it takes an eye to twinkle, but it, it's not very long, I know that. At the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound and the dead shall be raised incorruptible and we shall be changed. And I notice the next verse says, for this corruptible must put on incorruption. Right now we're corruptible. Then we won't be. We're, we're like that thing you put in the fridge a month ago and then you pull it out and it's all green and ugly. You know, we're, we're like that. We're corruptible now. But we won't be then. Uh, and this mortal must put on immortality. Listen, we're very mortal right now. Uh, people die every day. People who didn't expect to. It, hasn't it been tragic reading about all these different ones that have drowned on their holidays and so on? Uh, you, you know, you just, you don't know. We're, we're mortal. But someday we'll be immortal uh, when we're with Jesus. And that phrase uh, starts in verse 51. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. You know, not everybody's going to die. Some Christians will be taken without dying. Uh, I, I don't know. Uh, I guess the main thing is just we'll be with Jesus. I don't know that there's a better way. Uh, we'll be safe. We'll be changed. We'll be rewarded. You know, when, we, when we go to be with the Lord, uh, God has... Uh, rewards that he's, he's going to be giving. Uh, there's quite a few verses. We're not going to do a study on, on rewards this morning, but uh, for instance, in uh, 2 Corinthians 5.10, it says, We must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, that everyone may receive the things done in his body, according to that he hath done, whether it be good or bad. Now that's, I, I'm told that's, a, uh, that's rewards like at the Olympics. It's, it's not a uh, time of punishment. It's a time of rewards for Christians. You'll read in the Bible about various crowns. Uh, and that's when we'll be receiving our crowns. And there'll, there'll be rewards as we stand before the Lord. And he tells us very clearly in 1 Corinthians 3, it, it's, not, uh, it's not a time when God decides whether we're saved or not. If you're not saved, you won't be at this, this the judgment seat of Christ. Um, that, that's for rewards. And he tells us, that you can read it later in 1 Corinthians 3, uh, when he says, uh, Every man's work shall be made manifest, uh, for the day shall declare it. And it says, If any man's work shall be burned, he shall suffer loss, but he himself shall be saved, yet so is by fire. I guess not everybody's going to get rewards, but uh, we'll all be there at the judgment seat of Christ. Uh, we'll be rewarded. Uh, I'm looking forward to it. It, it should be a blessing. And the Bible tells us as well, we're going to be the bride of Christ. Now, I've never been a bride before. <laughs> uh, but as, as a Christian, we're going to be a part of the bride of Christ. And, and what a blessing that is. You know, the Bible talks in, in Revelation 19, uh, for instance, in verse 7. Let us be glad and rejoice and give honor to him, for the marriage of the Lamb has come and his wife hath made herself ready. In, in Ephesians, we read about the fact that God is preparing us to be his, his bride, that he might present it to himself a glorious church, 
not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that it should be holy and without blemish. And he's talking about us as, as Christians. Uh, Jesus coming again is something for us to, to look forward to. It's an encouragement to Christians. You know, Christ's return is in two parts. We talked about the rapture in uh, you know, 1 Thessalonians 4 and, and uh, verse 17 there. Uh, we shall be caught up. He comes for his saints. And the Bible says we meet him in the air. And, and that's a comfort. That's a blessing. But there's a, a second part of the second coming where he comes with his saints. That's us. Uh, Jude said, Behold, the Lord cometh with ten thousands of his saints. And, and let me say, this next part of the second coming is a warning to non-Christians. You know, the second coming of Christ... Um, yeah, we sang the song, I think, this morning, Glad Day. Did we sing that? Uh, this, this is the crowning day. Well, for the unbeliever, it's going to be a sad day when, when Jesus comes because they'll be lost then uh, for eternity. In, uh, we'll turn, if you would, to Revelation chapter 19. shouldn't be hard to find. It's just almost there at the end of your Bible. <clears throat> Revelation 19, verse 11. I just want to read some of these verses. This describes Jesus coming again. You know, his second coming is not going to be like his first coming. It won't be obscure. It won't be gentle. <laughs> it won't be as a babe in a manger. Uh, let me read some of it here. Revelation 19, verse 11. I saw heaven opened. Behold, a white horse. And he that sat upon him was called Faithful and True. And in righteousness he doth judge and make war. His eyes were as a flame of fire, and on his head were many crowns. And he had a name written that no man knew but he himself. And he was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood, and his name is called the Word of God. And the armies which were in heaven followed him upon white horses, clothed in fine linen, white and clean. And out of his mouth goeth a sharp sword, that with it he should smite the nations. And he shall rule them with a rod of iron. And he treadeth the winepress of the fierceness and wrath of Almighty God. And he hath on his vesture and on his thigh a name written, King of kings and Lord of lords. See, when Jesus comes again, when we come with him, uh, it's not going to be as a babe in the manger. It's going to be as King of kings and Lord of lords. It's going to be a, a, a fierce time. And uh, he will come uh, as, as the judge. Paul, uh, when he was at Athens, uh, said this to them. Let me just read it to you from Acts chapter 17. He says, He hath appointed a day in the which he will judge the world in righteousness by that man whom he hath ordained, whereof he hath given assurance unto all men in that he hath raised him from the dead. Now we know who that man is because he's the one that raised from the dead, the Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus will come as judge. Uh, if, I don't know if, if you're, you're probably not still in 1 Thessalonians, but 1 Thessalonians 5 and uh, verse 1 he talks a lot about the end times in this book, and he says, Of the times and seasons, brethren, you have no need that I write unto you, for yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so cometh as a thief in the night. For when they shall say, Peace and safety, then sudden destruction cometh upon them, as travail upon a woman with child, and they shall not escape. See, God's judgment is coming, and he says, uh, They shall not escape. Now, we will not be a, a part of that judgment that he's talking about here. Uh, part of it is uh, the tribulation. Do you know the tribulation is described as God's wrath? Yeah, people think a lot of things about the tribulation. and you know, I find people have a real interest many times in the book of Revelation and so on. But in Revelation uh, 6 and the end of verse 16, it talks about people uh, wanting to hide from the face of him that sitteth on the throne and from the wrath of the Lamb. For the great day of his wrath has come. See, that's the tribulation. It's the, it's the judgment of God. It's the, the day of God's wrath. Uh, 2 Thessalonians 1 verse 7 describes it as God's vengeance. You know, in Romans he said, Vengeance is mine, I will repay, saith the Lord. Vengeance is not ours. But God, at some point, uh, justice will reign. In uh, 2 Thessalonians uh, 1 verse 7 you who are troubled, rest with us. When the Lord Jesus shall be revealed from heaven with his mighty angels in flaming fire, taking vengeance on them that know not God 
and that obey not the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, who shall be punished with everlasting destruction from the presence of the Lord and from the glory of his power. Now, those are sobering words, aren't they? As we read about the coming of the Lord, uh, you know, it's fine for us to say, oh, I know the Lord, I'm safe, I'm looking forward to his coming. But you know, there's uh, so many around us. Uh, sometimes, I would challenge you sometimes, just go to one of these shopping centers and just sit or stand and look. There's so many people, they're, they're, each one is unique. God knows each one of them. And each one of them needs to know Jesus Christ as their Savior. Uh, the time is short. And the Bible says, they shall not escape. Now we know from Scripture that every knee shall bow. Someday they'll understand. Uh, Jesus is Lord. Uh, but this is a, this is a warning to, to non-Christians. Uh, there's a great day coming. Are you ready? Are you ready? Uh, the great white throne judgment uh, is recorded there in, in Revelation chapter 20 is a time when the lost will stand before God. You, you know, there's not just one general judgment. There's several that the Bible talks about. Uh, the, uh, the, the Bema seat, you know, for Christians and the great white throne for the lost and, and uh, several others. But uh, at this one, uh, this is when people will see uh, that without Christ, uh, they're lost. Uh, the Bible says... Uh, he, those that were not found written in the book of life were cast into the lake of fire. Uh, what, a, what a sad time that will be. But you know, what a contrast as we think about saved and lost and the coming of Christ. You know, what joy. We're, we're looking forward to Jesus coming. But for the lost, uh, they may not know it now, but it's going to be a terrible time when they stand before God. And, you know, they'll have, they'll have nothing to say. I've heard people say, well, if I, if I stand before God, boy, I'll say this. this. They'll have nothing to say. Their mouth will be closed. Uh, they'll understand their, their fate. In the future, Jesus will come again. He's given us that promise. Uh, everyone will be held accountable for what they've done with Jesus Christ. We're, we're very familiar with John 3.16. At the end of that chapter, John 3.36, it says, he that believeth on the Son hath everlasting life. And he that believeth not the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God abideth on him. It's not only that they won't have life, they'll have God's wrath. It's a, it's a terrible thing to contemplate. Everyone will be held accountable for what they've done with Jesus Christ. There'll be no excuse. Uh, some will be saved. Some will be lost. The Bible says in the book of Hebrews, it's a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living God. Uh, Jesus is coming again. Jesus will return. Jesus will judge. Jesus will rule. Uh, we can see in, in Scripture some of the things that Jesus will do. Well, what should we do? What should be our response? Uh, I, I don't know uh, everyone's relationship with the Lord here this morning, but listen, if you're not saved... Be born again. That's number one. Make sure that you know Christ. Uh, the Bible talks about how when Peter preached at Pentecost, uh, they that gladly received his word, it talked about. Listen, that's what you need to do. You need to gladly receive God's word. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus could come today. And let me tell you, it won't make a bit of difference whether you believe it or not. Jesus could come today. <laughs> you know, what we believe doesn't decide what the truth is. God decides what the truth is, and we need to believe Him. Gladly receive His word. If you're not saved, uh, let me uh, plead with you. Trust Christ today. If you are saved, oh, there's so many things we could look at, but uh, let me just give you a couple. One, stand fast in the Lord. Look at 2 Thessalonians 2 and verse 15. 2 Thessalonians 2 verse 15. The Bible says, Therefore, brethren, stand fast. And hold the traditions which you've been taught, whether by word or our epistle. Now our Lord Jesus Christ himself and God, even our Father which hath loved us and hath given us everlasting consolation and good hope through grace, comfort your hearts and establish you in every good word and work. He said everything you say and everything you do needs to be for the Lord. It needs to be honoring, honoring to the Lord. Uh, the way we stand fast is by faith. 2 Corinthians 1, he says, For by faith ye stand. In Ephesians chapter 6, a, a great uh, 
portion on, on, on this subject, he says, he tells us several times to stand. Be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. He says, put on the whole armor of God that, may, that ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. God wants us to stand. Um, in other places, he says, don't faint. Uh, that's, the, that's the negative uh, of it here. Uh, we need to stand for the Lord. We need to stand with the Lord. Uh, we need to stand together. We need to stand by faith. We need to understand God's word. Listen, it's not going to be by feelings that you'll stand. It's not going to be by culture that you'll stand. It's not going to be by family. <laughs> it's going to be by faith. Sometimes you'll have to stand against your family. Sometimes you'll have to stand against your culture. Sometimes you'll have to stand against your feelings. <laughs> yeah, we, we just need to stand. Having done all to stand. And then, I guess maybe just the other side of the coin on this, in 2 Thessalonians chapter 3, don't quit. 2 Thessalonians 3 verse 10. This is an interesting passage. Let me read you the whole thing here. 2 Thessalonians 3 verse 10 says, For even when we were with you, this we commanded you, that if any would not work, neither should he eat. You say, what's that got to do with Jesus coming again? Let's keep reading. For we hear that there are some which walk among you disorderly, working not at all, but are busybodies. Now them that are such we command and exhort by our Lord Jesus Christ, that with quietness they work and eat their own bread. But we brethren... Uh, but ye, brethren, be not weary in well-doing. Now, what he's talking about, there was a group of people in those days who said, well, Jesus is coming again. We'll just quit our jobs and we'll just wait. <laughs> and God is saying, don't quit doing what you know is right. Keep, you know, even if Jesus were to come today or tomorrow, we need to still do what's right. The right thing for you to do today is be in church. Well, if Jesus were to come today, man, I'd, I'd rather meet him coming from church than coming from the pub. Coming from the beach, uh, don't quit. Keep doing what you, what you know is right. Uh, you know, there's a, there's a lot of things in life that are right that, aren't, that don't seem very spiritual, and yet we need to do them, you know? We need to look after our families. We need to look after our house. We need to be faithful at work and uh, you know, be care, take care of our body because it's the temple of the Lord. I mean, you could go on and on, couldn't you? We need to quit being so... Some people, are, has been said, are so spiritual that they're no, so spiritually minded, they're no earthly good. Uh, if you're really spiritual, you'll be earthly good. You'll be a help to people. You'll be a blessing. Stand fast. Don't quit. And not quitting involves living a holy life, living for Jesus. There's a verse in 1 John, uh, 1 John 2, verse 28. He says, Now little children abide in him, that when he shall appear we may have confidence and not be ashamed before him at his coming. Now, I'll be honest with you. I don't know that I understand everything that that verse implicates. But I can understand the basics of it. And so can you. We don't want to be living our life in such a way that we'd be ashamed if Jesus were to stand with us, were to come. You know, if, if Jesus was right here, there's things you'd do and there's things you wouldn't do. Well, Jesus is right here. And Jesus is coming again. Uh, we need to live for Jesus. Live like what you will be. And later on in uh, the next chapter, he says uh, in verse uh, 2, chapter 3, verse 2, he says, We know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. Now, now listen to the next verse. And every man that hath this hope in him purifieth himself even as he is pure. God says, knowing that Jesus is coming again should be a motivation for us to live a holy life. I don't know how it was for you, but when I was in school, I was a little bit of a rat bag. And, uh, you know, there was, there was times when the teacher would leave the room. Did you ever have that? And, and boy, chaos could break out. I remember one time, everybody had their desks. We were playing bumper cars with our desks until somebody said, what did they say? The teacher's coming. Boy, our, our desks were straight and everything was, was good, wasn't it? Because the teacher was coming. Now, I'm glad there's not many kids here this morning to hear the, the pastor's bad example. But, um, you know, Jesus is coming again. Jesus could come today. Yeah, we shouldn't have to have somebody say, the teacher's coming. <laughs> Jesus is coming. Well, we should know that. We should live like that. 
Jesus could come today. Glad day. Live a holy life. Live for Jesus. Uh, be like Jesus. Uh, in 2 Timothy, he says, If a man therefore purge himself from these, he shall be a vessel unto honor. He's been talking about sin and dishonor. If we'll cleanse ourselves from these, he says, we can be a vessel unto honor. And God, God can use us. Uh, we need to stand fast. We need to, uh, not, to not faint, to, to live a holy life. And uh, Let me give you one more, and then, then I'll quit this morning. But we need to win those that, that we want to see saved. You know, there's those around us. I, I know we need to care for the whole world. It's true. God so loved the world. But you know, there's individuals that are special to you. Parents, children, husbands, wives, loved ones. And, uh, you know, the, the most wonderful thing you could do would be to take them to heaven with you. And as Christians, we need to have a, a concern. Uh, listen, as we read there in 1 Thessalonians, they shall not escape. Listen, we can't just say, oh, uh, you know, I hope they're, they're saved. I hope they'll make it to heaven. Uh, you, you know, maybe God will... Uh, listen, God will keep His word. God will not deny His word for you or me or anyone. They shall not escape. The time is short. We don't know. You know, as Christians, we can be encouraged. Jesus is coming again. What a blessing. But we don't want to be selfish. We don't want to be like those in Thessalonica who said, well, Jesus is coming again. We'll just lay back and do nothing. No, Jesus is coming again. We need to purify ourselves and be reaching out to others with the gospel. Uh, listen, if you're not saved, be warned. Jesus is coming. The Bible says that without Jesus... Uh, you'll be judged and, and rightly condemned. You know, God's, God knows. God knows we've all sinned. He's, he says it in the scripture. I've talked to so many people, and uh, you know, I've had so many people tell me how good they are. <laughs> and, you know, if you ask them, well, would you like to see what God says about it? No, not really. <laughs> see, they're not concerned about their relationship to God, and they need to be. God says we've all sinned and come short of the glory of God. He says the wages of sin is death, but... The gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. What a blessing. Do you have Jesus this morning? I often say it's as easy as A, B, C. You know, A, we need to admit that we're sinners. God says we've all sinned. We need to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, he says. That means believe that Jesus is the Savior, that he is the Son of God, that, that he did die and was buried and rose again. We need to believe on the Lord and we need to Call upon him. Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Uh, listen, he's the creator. He's the one who gave himself for you. He provided the remedy for, for sin by dying in our place. The Bible says in 1 Thessalonians 5, Who died for us, that whether we wake or sleep, we should live together with him. Jesus is coming again. Boy, I'm looking forward to that. Uh, will you be ready? Do you know Christ is your Savior? Uh, we're going to sing a, a song this morning from our hymnal, number uh, 163, Only Trust Him. Page 163, I'll get to... Uh,